Well, good morning, Calvary. I hope your day is going well. Today's passage is at the beginning of Exodus 5, and we meet up with our hero, Moses, right after he encounters God through the burning bush. God sends and calls him to the most powerful man in the entire land to demand something from him. That is, to set God's people free from their 400-year-long slavery. God wasn't sending Moses to do some small, measly task. God was confidently sending him with an impossible mission. So as you can imagine, the interaction would go pretty close to what you'd think. He demanded that Pharaoh release nearly one million slaves, men, women, and children. And I like to picture Pharaoh laughing Moses out of his meeting hall, because this was a ridiculous request. But Moses sticks his heels in the ground, and he warns Pharaoh of what he knows to be true, that he has just met with the God of all creation and control, and it's God who demands his people to be set free. Otherwise, God may send plagues or the sword. Listen to Pharaoh's response to all of this. Try to imagine his confusion with Moses and most likely a lot of annoyance as well. But the king of Egypt said this, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Get back to your work. Then Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are now numerous and you are stopping them from working. Pharaoh's response was to keep everything the status quo. He pulls Aaron and Moses aside and he's just like, bro, look, that's not how it's done around here. Slaves work and they don't go free. And you know what I'm thinking? Pharaoh had every right to believe this. He didn't believe in the God of all creation. He didn't know the power and majesty of God and he didn't care about Moses. But once again, Moses dug his heels in because he knew Pharaoh was gonna find out very quickly who the almighty God actually was. And this impossible task for Moses is child's play with God on his side. You know, there's a popular verse out there, Romans 8, 31, that says this, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In the face of an impossible God-given task, Moses demonstrated this pretty well. And here's my question for you. Is God confidently calling you to a task that is nearly impossible to complete? Have you even thought of that at all? Because here's the truth. God is absolutely calling each and every one of us to follow his commands and spread the gospel everywhere we go. And it might not seem as grand as freeing a million slaves in one go, but in my understanding, God thinks your calling is just as important and needed as Moses is. I want you to wrap your head around this. Every person on earth is a slave to something. Majority of us, it's sin or idols. And God has confidently called each of us to spread the good news of Jesus to free people from their spiritual slavery. You might not be doing work to break physical shackles, but you are breaking spiritual shackles. And let me tell you that that has an eternal consequence. So Moses wasn't the most confident guy. That's why his nephew Aaron was with him. Moses couldn't speak well. He wasn't someone important or powerful. He doubted himself, and in all honesty, I would too. But Moses didn't need any of that. All he needed to do was trust God. Because God looks at Moses the same way he looks at us, and he says this, you don't need confidence in yourself. You don't need to speak well. You don't need to be a powerful or an important person. All you need is me. So here's how I want to encourage you today. If you know God has called you to free people from their spiritual slavery and death, whether that's a family member or a coworker or a group of people, even in another country, wherever God has you and has called you to free people, go with knowledge that God has confidently called you there. If you are following the commands of God, trust that he will accomplish the impossible mission through you. And that's what it may seem like sometimes, impossible for you alone, Maybe, but with God, it's child's play. You have that family member who rejects Christ and might even resent you for following Christ. Welcome to your impossible mission. Maybe you have a coworker on the brink of self-destruction and sin. Welcome to your impossible mission. Maybe you have a son or daughter who has fallen away from Christ. Welcome to your impossible mission. But remember, with God, it's not impossible. Calvary, I hope you leave today passionately pursuing the impossible mission that God has confidently sent you on. You can have fear, you can have doubt, but don't lose hope. Because at the end of the day, trust that God has sent you to those people for a reason. And your trusting and obeying God is all you have to do. Have a good day, Calvary.